Welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey. Today is a Christmas rose. Now the pattern that I have for you has two separate flowers on it. This is the Christmas rose version. I've actually added a couple more petals. It only asked for doing three. I just thought you know it needs better balance. I would actually probably even think about doing more. It has a button in the middle. That's my own add-on. I felt it needed just a little something more so I glued a button to the middle. This is a great idea for placing on top of a gift or you can actually use the idea for any kind of accessories that you may have. This is what the back looks like just like so. So when you go to sew these leaves on you need to use the color white so that it will come through the, the front here. It will not be visible. So let's uh, without further ado let's grab your yarn. I'm gonna be using a size J 6. Uh, zero millimeter crochet hook today. It does ask for a smaller hook a size I five and a half but for tutorial reasons I'm gonna show you with the larger hook and I'm also gonna change my color to pink so it's easier for you to follow along. To begin we're gonna start off with the slip knot just like so. And there's slower tutorials available if you're new to crochet and do not know how to do that process. So we're gonna start off by chaining of four. Remember the one on the hook does not count as one. So we have one, two, three and four and let's join it to the beginning chain. So just insert into the beginning chain, pull through both to form a ring. So the next process that we need to do is that we need to chain up two. So one and two and we're going to do seven half double crochets around the center of this ring. So we're just gonna wrap the yarn first, go into the middle ring, pull through, you have three loops on your hook pull through all three and that's a half double crochet and we totally wanna do that for seven times. Now the chaining of two counts as half double crochet as well. So in actual fact when you go to count the number of posts that are going all the way around you should have the number eight when you're when you're counting. So let's uh, continue to speed up and I'm not counting at this point. I will be in just a moment. I'm one of those kind of people where I don't really count right out to begin. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I happen to get eight and now we're just going to go to the beginning chain th of two, pull through for a slip stitch. So pull through everything and that is the beginning round that we're gonna be working with. Moving along to round number two. It's again really easy. We're just gonna simply just chain up one Okay and then we are going to uh, single crochet into the same stitch as joining. So just go right directly below it and do a single uh, crochet just like that. And then we're going to chain two. So one and two. Let's go to the very next single crochet or half double crochet in the, in, the, uh, in the round and we are just gonna single crochet into that next one. We chain two, one, two, go to the next uh, half double crochet in the round and, and single crochet, one and two. It's so important that you get your stitches right and then we single crochet, one and two, like so, and one and two and single crochet. So by the end of it you should have a total of eight of these loops going all the way around. So one and two, single crochet. And what I like to do is just make sure I double check. So I got one, Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have one, two, next one. So that means that there's seven of these and of course to join it back to the beginning I have to chain two first to create that final eighth and I just I just slip stitch it to the beginning of the chain uh, when I started. So you have a total one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and that concludes off round number two. Okay, let's begin round number three. Round number three is really easy. What we need to do is that we need to pay attention to these gapping spaces that go all the way around. Once we start putting in our petals, for example, this one here is gonna get hidden because there's gonna be so much going on in this gap and so we gotta pay attention to that. So the first thing we need to do is that we need to slip stitch into that gapping space first, chain one, and then double crochet five times into that same space. So that was one, two, three, four, and five. We chain one and then slip stitch back into that same gap. So what's gonna happen here is that because you have so much going on in this petal 
see this gap in space? It's almost lost and so you automatically wanna jump over here. We need to make sure that we get into every space that goes around. There should be eight of these petals. So we simply look for the next one which is right here. It looks compressed but it's it's truly there. You single or you slip stitch first, one uh, chain and then five double crochets into that and do that all the way around and when we come back I'll show you how to finish this round and then we'll move up to the next. I'm coming all the way back around finishing my final petal. There should be eight. I'm chaining one and then I slip stitch just like so down like this and now we're going to begin the next round and that'll be round number four. Okay, let's begin round number four together. Round number four is really easy but we have to move ourselves back to the center area here and there's a really easy way to do that. So here's what I'm gonna tell you to do. You need to chain one first. Okay, and now I want you to bend the project or turn it around so that you're looking at it from the back side. And what I want you to do is that I want you to play into these gapping spaces that you see all here. So we're just gonna go into the very first one and we're just gonna go around the posting area for a single crochet. We're then going to chain two, one and two. Okay, go into the next posting area just like so. For a single crochet, one and two go into the next. So you could fight your way to um, bend these petals out of the way but if you're actually working the back like this, so much easier. And what this is doing is it's creating a whole section for you to play with to create your final layer of the flower. Okay, so we're just continuing to single crochet, chain two. You should have a total of eight of these going all the way around because you have eight petals to work with at this time. So one and two. One and two. Okay, one and two. Okay, so now I just wanna verify that I have enough to count. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is chaining of two. So when I join it with a slip stitch with the very beginning, I'm gonna have a total of eight of these loops going all the way around the back side. So this is the final round number five and essentially what we have to do is what we have to work ourselves to the first gapping space. So we're gonna slip stitch into that space first, then chain one and then seven double crochets in that same space. So one, two, three, four, and five, six, and seven just like so. Once you have that done you are then going to chain one and then slip stitch back into that same gapping space and that concludes that. So because it's sitting slightly more out on the bottom it'll appear that it's bigger on the other side and there's more double crochets but it will appear that it's further out as well. So to go to the next gapping space we slip stitch first into that space, chain one and then seven more double crochets. One two, three, and then four, five, six, and seven. And once you have your seven, chain one and then slip stitch into the same spice. Please do that all the way around. Again to start the next one is just a slip stitch and then begin over again. So chain one, seven more double crochets. Do that all the way around. When we come back we're gonna finalize off this project together. So I'm coming all the way back around and I've already chained my one and now I'm slip stitching here and just going to fasten this off at this time. So this is what the interior kind of looks like here. It looks okay if it's sitting on a present but you can see this is why I did something in the center. So for tutorial reasons I'm gonna show you how to fill this in uh, with crochet. It's just a simple, I'm just gonna make a little round um, circle to lay over top and so when I'm going to uh, fasten in my leaves I'm going to put that on top so that it covers the, the grain work just like so. I use a smaller size crochet hook in this white version versus this pink version. To do a centerpiece just like so, this is not part of the pattern. This is my own ad libbing and what we're going to do is that we're just gonna do a slip knot just like so and we're going to chain a four. So one, two, three and four coming around in just like so and in 
just like this and then what I want you to do is that I want you to chain three. So one, two and three coming into the center of the ring let's us put 11 double crochets around the center of that ring and what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a round perfect circle. So with the chaining of three that we started off with and remember in the rules of double crochet that counts as a post so there should be a total of 12 of those going all the way around. Once we're done this we're simply just going to fasten off and basically we have now an overlay for the middle of it without having to do a button if you don't prefer to do that option. So here we go. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. To finish off we're just going to join it with a slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain 3 like so and what I would recommend at this point leave enough string on here so that you can sew that in to the top of your flower. Pull this out like so. You can now trim that center piece off as well. Okay and then what you can do now is that using this string you can now sew it to the middle of your particular flower just like so. So let's review on how to sew our projects together. So are we, we haven't done the leaves yet of this particular rose but I wanna just put this middle piece on first. So I simply just wanna start off on the front side and just carry through right to the back of the flower. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna come around the posting areas here and because, and I just want to come through just the side section and because you're using the same colored yarn it's really easy to kinda hide that in. So let's go back in to the other side and then come back through the back to the front. It's a great way to hide that framework in my opinion. Now if you really looked at the photograph you would have seen that the framework is actually very visible. I just thought to myself you know what why not try to fill it in if you can with something a little more cute. So once you come all the way around I'm almost done. That's how quick this is gonna go. and I'm just going to fasten it off on the back. So how to fasten off is that I wanna go in and just slide it in some stitches. Don't not go to the front side just like so. Go one direction going into a different space of different stitches just so you're capturing different fibers. A sharp needle really works well for this kind of idea and then go in one last time in the other direction. By going in different directions just like so you can actually really um, lock this in permanently into position and now let's get rid of all of the loose ends like so and now we're ready to create the leaves next. So let's begin to work on the leaves and these leaves are really easy to make. They're actually working down the center point and down the other side and there's only actually three that's required in the pattern. I just felt it needed something a little bit more so I decided to do that. Now to go along with my particular project that I'm doing with you live on camera I decided to mute down my leaves to be a little more whimsical at this point. So what let's begin to work on the leaf now. We're going to do a slip knot and we're using the same size hook. So let's begin. We're going to chain 10. So we're gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and now we're going to start working back along the line. So we just have to start off with our first two, second chain from the hook 1 and 2 and go to a single crochet and do a single crochet into the very next one. So you got two single crochets in a row. We're now gonna do five half double crochets in a row. So we're gonna do five. So one and two, three and four and five. Okay and now we have two stitches left. So the next one is just going to be a double crochet by itself. 
and then the next one which is the very last one will be seven. Watch how I turn this as I'm going around because it's like going around a hat. So we got one, we got two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, I'm just gonna pull everything nice back and tight again. So we have seven around just like so and now we're gonna come down the opposite side. So we're kind of uh, started like this and we kind of rotate it all the way around. So we're going to begin on the very next one. We're going to double crochet into the very next one which is the bottom of the double crochet on the other one. Okay, and then five half doubles in a row and you're just working down the opposite side of the chain. So we've got one, So we now have five half doubles in a row. We just look for the spaces. You can clearly see them and we have five in a row. So five half doubles. So one, two, three, four, and five. Leaving us two stitches left and on the very final two we are just going to slip stitch together just like this. Okay, and that provides a nice point and then essentially what we're going to do, just trim and now we're just gonna weave in our ends to do that and then we are just going to just take a darning needle and hide everything and this is what your leaf looks like that is underside of your particular rose. Okay, and I'm just gonna use a darning needle at this point and just really hide in that loose end because it's on the point you will actually see it. So I just wanna take my darning needle hide in the loose ends just like so and just kinda go in through the top center just to kinda even it off and down through behind the stitch work. Okay, so that should equal that. Yeah, that's good. And then I just wanna go back up behind the stitch work again like so. And now I have my leaf. So I'm just gonna trim that off. So you have to do three of these is if you're following the instructions. If you're not following the instructions you can ad lib whatever you wanna do and then remember that you're gonna get rid of that middle one as well. So there will be no loose ends out of here and we're gonna use the same color. If you're gonna go all the way through the middle then you're gonna have to use pink to attach it and if not then you just basically just go in this uh, pink area with a yarn that you think is good. So you could use green. You might wanna just come out a little bit further so it pops out more or if you just wanna just peeking you just wanna go toward the center. The instructions say to overlap the three together so there will be one, two and three and basically you'll just go right through everything and so it's just peeking out just like so. Let's just quickly review on how to sew these together. We're gonna put it so that the right side is facing down as the as the rose is facing down and I just wanna simply just kinda go into a piece. Now on the other side of here I put a slip knot that is open. So when I come through I wanna just push my needle through that slip knot and pull everything tight. That's a great way to lock everything into position. Now I just wanna continue to sew this and I just wanna slide in behind a few of the stitch work not going anywhere close to the top surface and then just kinda pulling it through and then going back into the leaf again and just continuing just to slide it behind a few stitches and then back through the leaf again. So this is a very easy uh, way to tack on your leaves. Just make sure that they're equal if you are a person that likes to have balance. Just like so. It doesn't need to be tacked really uh, that securely. It can have a little bit of flex to it and then just simply when you're done just simply fasten off. So we're going to just pull through the loop and just tie a quick knot. This is the underside anyway. Why on camera do I always screw up? <laughs> oh my. So what's happened here is that I decided that I was gonna go through some fibers here and not through an actual loop itself. So I'm just gonna back my way out. See even people like me screw up. So here we go and then basically I've got everything tied into position. I can do off my loose end over here 
and now I have a Christmas rose that has a small peeking out flower or leaf just like so. Until next time, these are the Christmas roses. Enjoy these free patterns available on redheart.com. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the crochet crowd.com. We'll see ya.